Hi everyone, my name is Giovanna Proenza and today we're going to talk about practice problems of week one of CS50. So basically these problems are optional but we highly recommend you taking because they will give you some good foundations to do the lab and the problem sets. If you enjoyed this content please give us a thumbs up if you want to know more about CS50 and other coding resources available online. Subscribe to our channel and if you want to have our help or help from people around the world check the description below and join our free Discord community. So without further ado let's start. In the first problem we're gonna work with this debug. The learning goals are become familiar with C syntax, learn what C compiler error messages mean, and get practice with debugging. So let's see some things. I prepare here one thing to show you. Debugging is something you're gonna do for the rest of your life as a programmer. You will see that you're gonna spend more time debugging than actually writing your code, all right? So basically we have different types of bug, but in this particular case, we're gonna work with syntactical bugs. So how can we get a syntactical bug? Basically, if we have a combination of words or punctuations that are not correct and we're gonna see some strategies to avoid this and some examples of a syntactical error. So the first strategy that we highly recommend you is installing a extension on your VS Code and this extension will help you highlighting the syntax and will give you an automatic indentation and so on. So every time you're writing your code this extension will help you to write the correct word that you're looking for. In this case you can install this uh, extension C slash C++ so let's do this in our extension here in my VS code. If I search for C slash C++, we are seeing here this uh, extension. We already have this installed, but you can install over again if you don't have it. I think it's already installed, but if you don't, just click in here installing and it will be installed for you. Okay, that's great because it will help you a lot when you're coding. The second strategy that you can have is read and reread your code over and over again before attempting to compile it. Because sometimes we can have some mistypos, we can forget writing a semicolon or importing some things. It's always important to to check what you wrote and see if you're not missing anything, all right? Because sometimes we do mistakes without even noticing. Then the third strategy is always testing your code as you write. So you can use the debugger and we're gonna teach you how to use the debugger when you're checking our video of problem set one cache. And you're gonna see how can you use the debugger of CS50 when you're checking the problem set one Mario less that we did, all right? And we're gonna highlight in other codes as well. But in this particular case, we won't be using the debugger, but debugger is really good. Or you can use print statements or you can, for example, write one piece line of code and then you check if it's running the way that you're expecting. It's always good to write your code in steps, not writing everything once and then you just see what is going on. All right, so always test your code. And four, ask for help if you're stuck. As I mentioned, you can join our free Discord community by clicking the link below in the description. And in there you can ask us help when you're stuck or from people around the world and we're here to help you. So this is really good because sometimes when you're, we're learning how to code by ourselves, we get a little bit lost and we don't know anyone to ask. But but in here with our Discord community, you can ask us. All right, now let's see some examples of a syntactical error. Here, I put a image. It's cut, it, but it's okay. Uh, the first error that we can have is missing a semicolon at the end of a statement. So we know that in C, semicolons are really important. So always check if you have a semicolon. For example, here in this int x equals to 10, we're missing a semicolon and we're gonna fail when we're trying to compile our code. The second common mistake is using a reserved keyword as a variable. So we know that there are some words that are specific for C language. So for example, int, in this case, we're trying to create a variable called int, but int is already a keyword special for C. We also can try to create a variable called return or printf and it won't accept. So always be careful about the variable names you're giving. The third example here is using a single quote instead of double quote to enclosing a string. So in C, we need to use double quotes, all right? The fourth example is omitting a closing parenthesis. So always remember, Every time you have a function, for example, printf, always check if you have the parentheses, always check if you're closing the curly bracket. It's really important to open up and close the things you're opening. And the last example is using an undeclared variable. So for example, if I have, in this case here, we're seeing, we're trying to print the value of our variable x. But at any point we declare what x is. We don't know if it's an integer, if it's a float, if it's a string, we don't know its value. So this might crash your code. Okay, so always be aware of that. Well, with this in mind, let's start our problem. So basically in this debug pro project, uh, this is kind of the idea. We're gonna check this idea of debugging semantical uh, errors, all right? And to do this, we have to uh, download the file that we have in here. So first I'm gonna do this make dear debug here in my code space. I'm gonna do make dear debug. Then I'm gonna enter in the debug folder. As you can see here, I have a debug folder because I just created. Now I'm gonna enter in my terminal and I will download this file that CS50 is giving to us. This is 
a distribution code, so we already have some code inside, and we're gonna work with this file, all right? Then if I do touch uh, debug.c, it will open up for me, I believe. Oh no, because I have to do cd debug, it's already in here. Okay, it didn't open up, but I can open up by clicking. Well, so let's just start. The main goal of our problem is to try to compile our file and check where is the problem, and always check in here and fixing our code until we are able to run this with no errors, all right? So for example, if I do here, make debug, and I click enter. Here it's giving me this warning message, error, using an undefined, uh, undeclared identifier name, and it's highlighting the name in here. So this means that something is going on in our line nine, uh, especially with our variable name. We know that in C we have to declare what is the data type of the variable we're working with. So let's see what is the data type of name. Here we have the variable name equals, and we're using the function get string, and the get string function is asking what's your name. So this word get string function already reminds us something, that this variable name will store a string. So this is the first thing we have to do, string, okay? Now let's try to run again and see if we get a different error. So now if I make debug, now it's complaining about another part of the, of the same line. Now it's complaining that expected semicolon at the end of the declaration, and it's highlighting for us where we should add the semicolon. So now I add this, and we should see a different error make debug. Now, use an undeclared identifier location. So now we're having the same problem as we had with name, and it's missing the data type of our variable. So we know that here, location, where it's going to store the value of the get string function. Again, since we're trying to get a string, the data type of our location is a string. Let's run our debugger again and see where is the problem. So here, line 10, it's telling us expected semicolon at the end of the declaration. So here, the same problem. Another but exactly like our example. Now, if we see in here, it's saying implicit declaration of print of function print is invalid. And here it's a little bit complicated of what this means, but as we can see, print is not a function that exists in C. Actually, print is how we're gonna print things in Python. This is how we write in Python. But here it should be print f. Alright, let's see if we get a different error now. If I don't make debug. Now it's giving us a bunch of errors. So too many errors emitted, stopping now. So here it's complaining about many things. The first thing is implicitly declaring library function printf with type int, and it's complaining about printf. So here the debugger already gave us some suggestion. Include the header stdio.h or explicitly provide a declaration for printf. So this is important. It's already telling us that we didn't import, we didn't include our main library stdio.h. So this is exactly what we're gonna do here in the top of our file. Include include stdio.h. And now I believe this might fix our first issue. All right, so we don't have the same bug, now we have a different one. Uh, format specifies type int, but the argument has type string. So here it's complaining about our percent %i, as we can see. And as we know by the lecture, every time we use percent %i is because we want to declare uh, the value of our variable that it's an integer. But in our case, name is a string. So if we want to display here the value of name, we have to use the percent %s, that means string. All right, we're gonna have the same problem again, but for location now, and it's complaining exactly about that, because location is also a string, it's not an integer. So here we're gonna change to s. We're almost there. I know we're gonna have one extra bug, and I think this is the final one, that is expected semicolon after expression. So here in our line 14, we need to add a semicolon, and I believe now we're gonna pass, let's see. And if I do make debug, no bugs appearing, and if I run debug, it's asking what's your name, Giovanna? Where do you live? Brazil, and now it's saying hello Giovanna from Brazil, so it seems that it's working. Now let's do the check 50, we don't need to submit anything, all right, uh, because this is optional, like I, I mentioned, we don't need to be graded, so I will just run check 50 and see if we get all green. So this is it, as we can see we got all green, so this means that we're done with this problem. Now let's go to the next one. So now let's work with half. Basically in this project, we're gonna work with different types of data, practice type casting, use math operations and create a function with input parameters and return values. One thing that is important, basically type casting is when you're trying to convert the data type of a variable into another one. So for example, if you have an integer with number two and you wanna convert it into a float. So instead of being two, the number will be 2.0 because remember that floats are numbers with decimal places. And create functions with input parameters and return value will be 
very important for your learn because basically as working as a programmer you're going to face multiple functions with multiple parameters and you have to manipulate them in a way so it's really good that here we can practice a little bit before the problem so what is going to happen suppose you're eating out at a restaurant with a friend and want to split the bill evenly you may want to anticipate the amount you you owe before the bill arrives with tax added in this problem we will complete a function to calculate the amount each of ohms based on the bill amount the tax and the tip all right so before we see the implementation details let's download the source file so i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna do a make there half cd half and i'm gonna download the file so here as we can see we have a half uh folder and now we have our file so what do we have in here basically we have we're including the libraries we're gonna use we're including here the prototype of our function remember that every time we create an auxiliary function we have to declare it before the main all right and here in our main function we're asking for the bill amount and it will be a float we're asking for the tax and it will be a float and we're asking for the tip percent and it will be an integer one thing that is important the only number that will be actually a uh, whole number will be the bill amount the tax and the tip will be percentages so we have to convert them when we're working to get the the value that we're gonna pay okay and at the end we're gonna call the function half to know how much we're gonna pay okay we're gonna implement this function so right now our function half contains the bill that it's a float uh the tax that is a float and it is a percentage and an integer that is the tip okay and we have to manipulate things in order to create it so let's see here the implementation details this part I already said so since these values are percentages you have to do some work to convert this to more appropriate formats to using the calculation okay so we're going to convert the percentage into numbers that we can work so for example if we have a tip of 20 percent we're going to convert this into a number and it will be 0.2 the final amount due should add the tax to the bill before calculating the tip finally you will return exactly half of the full amount including the bill amount the tax and the tip so how this is going to work let's understand here the problem as I mentioned, we have two parameters, bill and tax, that are float numbers. And we have the parameter tip that is an integer. So how, what we're going to do, what do we need? We need to calculate the tax amount. And what will be the tax amount? The tax amount will be the bill amount times the percentage of the tax. All right. Once we have this tax amount, we're going to add this tax amount to our bill amount. And we're going to have the full value of the bill. Then we're going to calculate the tip amount. So we're going to multiply the tip by the value of the bill with the tax. The tax. Then we're going to have this total amount because we're going to sum the tip in this value that we have. And finally, we're going to return half of this total amount. Okay, this is pretty much what we have here. If you want to see this PDF will be available. If you check the description below, you can get this PDF here. We've let an example of how it will work, but let's implement. Okay, let's implement these steps in here that I mentioned. So I'm going to comment them out. Great. So how can we calculate the tax amount? First, I'm gonna create a variable that will store the bill times the tax, the percentage of the tax. And here, this bill can be a float because we can have a value like 12.25, for example. So our variable here will be float and I'm gonna call tax amount. And how are we gonna calculate? We're gonna do bill times and then we're gonna convert the tax that it's a percentage into a number. So here, we're gonna do tax divided by 100. All right, then we need to calculate the bill plus the total amount. So the, we're going to create a variable called float bill amount, and it will be exactly this bill plus tax. So bill plus tax amount. Great. Oh, I forgot here the semicolon. Then we're going to calculate the tip amount. So here in the problem, they mentioned that uh, the final amount due should add to should add the tax to the bill we already did this before calculating the tip so now we're going to calculate the tip based in this bill amount variable so to do this we're going to create a float again and it will be the total amount sorry the tip amount and how we're going to calculate we're going to do something similar to what we did for the tax amount so we're going to get the bill amount and we're going to uh, multiply by the tip but the tip is an integer and we need to convert this into a float because we're going to divide this by a hundred so to do this we're going to do float tip and we're going to divide by a hundred all right this is pretty much what we need then we're going to calculate the total amount by adding the tip amount in our bill amount so here i'm going to create a verbal float total amount and it'll be equal to our bill amount plus the tip amount and finally, we're going to calculate and return half of the total amount. 
So here in our return, we're, gonna ret we're not going to return 0.0. .0. We're going to return total amount divided by 2. And that's pretty much what we need, okay? Let's run and see if it works. And then we're going to do use the debugger to understand what is going on. Okay, so make half. All right, we have some an error here, line 28. We're missing the semicolon, something that I mentioned that we need to test and I forgot. So make half, now it's compiling. Now let's run half. And for example, let's use this example here we are seeing. If I put 12.50, so 12.50, and the sales tax here will be 8.875 and the tip percentage will be 20. We have to see as a result 8.17. So in here, we're seeing exactly what we want, all right? I'm not gonna do the debugger in this problem because I'm gonna do it in the next one because here's pretty straightforward. We just need to calculate. We need to understand how the problem works and then we calculate. And I think understanding this problem is a little bit tricky, but hopefully you were able to understand. Now let's do the check 50 and see if we pass. Okay, and one thing uh, that I always gonna mention is if you don't understand, please send here on the comment or join our free Discord community where we can help you along your programming journey. And as we can see, we got all green. So now we're going to do the final practice problem and I'll be right back. Now let's work with prime. So in this problem, we're going to work with for loops module and creating a Boolean function. So for loops is something we saw during the lecture that help us to do multiple times the same thing. For example, in the lecture here, when we wanted to print meow, we were able to print meow instead of writing printf meow three times. We were able to do this by just doing this for loop that would print. It would iterate from zero to less than three. So from zero, one and two. And in each 